So I'm just going to talk about success for a second and kind of success philosophy because there's always kind of this common conception that people just need to buy the best equipment or they just need to live in a certain place or they just need to know a few people to start out with or they just need to write a really good cover letter. But I think there's kind of, there's definitely more than just these kind of circumstances and situations that kind of make you successful in this business. I think w one is definitely commitment and kind of in the same hand overcoming fear, kind of self-worth, just trust, and that kind of ability for you just to kind of own what you're doing in terms of your skills and your attitude towards d delivering those skills and working with other people uh, that kind of make you s like naturally rise to the top. I think if people are kind of naturally just willing to kind of go out there and they're just passionate about making it work, but they're also, with the attitude sense, being able to be diplomatic and try and work around solutions and constantly problem solve like we're all doing. I think those are the people that are gonna excel in this business. I think for me personally, I feel incredibly successful for just being able to have the amount of thousands of hours of experience and obviously some nice equipment definitely helps uh, as you kind of move up and things become even more demanding. But just that kind of interpersonal psychological aspects of just me feeling really secure in myself that I'm not, not everything's going absolutely crazy if I don't get a call for a week, for instance. I'm just completely kind of self-sufficient in just knowing that I'm contacting clients, I'm just making sure people are happy with their projects, seeing where I can help out, and also just improving myself as well. That's why we, I do the kind of soundrolling.com training, just to kind of keep, me, keep my mind sharp and obviously help out lots of other people. Um, but when you're talking about success, there's obviously the, uh, the failure, right? We can't get, can't get around it, there's failure. And at the start, it's definitely very, very tricky to kind of get your kind of break in. There's so many different ways. Uh, for me, it was traveling 11 hours one way to London and then 11 hours back because I was, I was staying with my parents in Dundee and I was uh, working in London. So you can imagine 22 hour bus journey for two or three day projects, just trying to scrape by, get myself a bit more equipment. And now here I am living, living in the most expensive city in the world um, but with that, it doesn't matter how successful I feel, there are going to be times where I'm going to have to want to prevent failure. And I have to be very kind of sort of pragmatic about that and just go out and kind of just own it and just be like, I'm not going to let myself get into a situation where I might fail because there's lots of things against you. One being ex expense and obviously the uh, kind of influx and outflux I guess of work because you're not always gonna be super busy especially I mean I'm shooting this in January and January is usually the time where things are pretty dead thankfully things have gone really well because I've set things up before so when I'm talking about sort of failure prevention it's kind of seeing the road ahead and you're gonna know that things are gonna pick up towards April kind of die off towards August and then kind of die off at December, January. And kind of in between those times, there's kind of these big waves of whether it be kind of corporate or feature film or um, kind of any, any type of project, depending what you're in. And you've kind of got to learn and understand those kind of flows and just be able to ride with them. So I think an important aspect is just saving and just making sure you not only take your chunk uh, for tax, just in case, because uh, obviously if you spend it all on equipment, then well, hey, it's investment in the business, which is good. Uh, but you have to just be, things Things can happen. Um, whether it be your rent goes up, your boiler breaks, your car breaks, your equipment breaks, you got to have some sort of insurance, whether it just be your savings in the bank and insurance policy, home insurance, etc., etc. So I think that is a very key point. And a lot of people, if you're living hand to mouth, and suddenly you break your arm, break your leg. That can be you out for a couple of months and no one's really gonna be wanting to kind of just slip you a, a couple of fibers just to try and keep getting by. Of course, being in London, a couple of fibers will probably buy you about one meal. But um, 
yeah. So, with that in mind, in terms of, so we've got success, and that is just all about your kind of mindset, and we've got this failure prevention. What else is going to make people successful? And I think, for me, it's a, a massive influence is peer group. And whether that be online, through the kind of forums and things like that, or people that I actually know and speak to in the real world, um, or online through video chats and things. Uh, I think it's a very integral part of just sharing what they're doing, what's working, what's not working, and how they kind of approach things. And I think it's really useful to get not just kind of one perspective, or just to build up your own perspective with the kind of blinkers on, um, and just do things because you've always done them before. In the same hand, you can't just take everything your peer group says as gospel, there's just always this conversation going on. And I think that's just, it's just really important. Uh, but the kind of frustrating thing, I guess, and this is probably for you as well, is that even if you're on forums, there's there's just kind of this, there's not really a bigger conversation about stuff. There's, you, everything has to be organized and rightly so into kind of categories and topics. And it's very hard to kind of just decide what you want to focus on or what you want to try and learn beforehand that's going to kind of save you time later on. It's kind of just this last kind of dash of quick Google stuff because it isn't working. So, and I guess just thinking about it, the other thing is no one's really teaching you kind of the, the business aspect. Um, and there's this other thing of, I guess, like family and friends that are not in the business or whatever, probably don't quite understand and think you've maybe gone a bit insane. I don't know. Um, I think my parents and family are definitely surprised that I can actually make a living doing sound um, and just be so casual about not working that much either, <laughs> occasionally. Um, but, you know, you're, I mean, you're already working, I'm assuming, or you've at least left kind of film school. And so you're already incredibly smart for just finding resources like this. And there's, there's loads of others, JW Sound and things like that. Um, and just being able to prepare yourself for essentially your career and it's a self it's a self-made one in a kind of strange way although other people have done it before you're kind of making your own sort of little track in the grass uh, kind of through the field uh, yeah let's just give up on the crazy metaphors for a second um, but what you what I'm doing is I'm basically setting up these sound chats and the sound chats are just to give you not just one perspective on just one matter but to give you loads of perspectives on loads of matters that are all completely common to our line of work and I think if I take for instance my my chat with Mark Weingarten who did Interstellar I think I can gain a tremendous amount of knowledge from him but at the same time I'm not yet at that level so I can take I can take his knowledge and try and incorporate what is fitting with me in kind of the low budget realm. Um, and at the same time, then I can interview uh, like Eric Milano and he does documentaries and he's doing like dialogue editing and also discussing kind of how he works with directors on documentaries and how if he hears things, sound bites or whatever that are, an, are cut from an interview, uh, how it kind of builds up a story and kind of builds up a better narrative and how he feels about that. It just gives me such a bigger appreciation for what everyone's doing inside the department and also can get my mind ticking in terms of when I get to a, a project, just being able to then say, oh, well, are you, are you going to do it like this? Or can I speak to the post-production people? Or, And I'm kind of thinking 10 steps ahead. Uh, at the same time. So I'm being very prepared and yet very proactive and kind of on point. Um, and so the people that kind of join this program are just going to get obviously all the advantages that come with having Oscar winning sound people talking about um, <laughs> how they do their stuff because they're obviously very successful at it uh, for a multitude of reasons and so that's what I'm keen to find out in terms of not only their work process but sort of how they how they think about post-production or if they're in post-production, how they think about location sound and just this kind of exchange of ideas and how we can get things across. 
Now, the program is going to be open kind of for a while, I think about a month or two, and then I'll kind of close it for a bit and just really kind of get down to grips with kind of what people are kind of really after and kind of make a better program that's more tailored to everyone, whether you be in whatever single sector you like in terms of whether it's reality, documentaries, uh, fiction, narrative, uh, non-fiction. Um, so I guess all that's left is to just kind of challenge you. It's just to say, if you really want to kind of master and be successful, you have to take knowledge and advice from the best. And I think that's becoming more and more scarce these days. And this is why I'm setting this up. Um, a portion of uh, what you contribute or invest in today is just going to go to the people that contribute as well. And you're more than welcome to have a sound chat with me. I'd love to have you on. It'd be fantastic. Um, and so then we can just basically build just a better interconnected global conversation about our craft and about what we're doing. So that's my challenge to you and I hope to see you on the other side.